Welcome to our Eco Plus program. In today's show, we are going to focus on how one of the civil society organizations here in Uganda is promoting environmental conservation. Joint Energy and Environment Projects, JEEP, is one of the pioneer organizations in Uganda that has advocated for the conservation of our environment. Located seven miles in Chanja village in Nakawa division, JEEP has for 40 years now been educating Ugandans about how to better manage our environment without causing harm. Joint Energy and Environment Projects was founded by Ugandans, and that is when there was a very serious drought in Ethiopia, which was due to environmental degradation, not intentionally, but through other activities, ordinary activities, just like the way we carry out our activities mm. in the gardens, in the forests, at home, everywhere. Mm. So Ethiopia had that serious drought. And when these founder members of G, one was Mr. Sylvester Senta Makumbi, the late, Mr. Joseph Patrolia Mukasa, the late, and Ted Muzira, who is still living, though she's old and tired. Mm. Those people, when they had the news over television, over in the newspapers, and from other sources, they felt very worried. And they thought, since Ethiopia geographically is not very far from Uganda, and we are Africans doing almost the same activities, they thought it was important to start warning and educating Ugandans about environment. Specifically, how are you saving the environment we as Jeep? Various means. One, we take care of the soil. We have to manage the soil. How, when you are using the soil, because we all do the agriculture, we we'll dig it, whatever, soil management is very, very important. Yes. To see that it is conserved and it still serves the purpose. Mm. Water conservation is another issue which should be conserved because you can't do without the water. Tree planting is a, a very important aspect that Jeep carries out because without trees, definitely, it is almost no life. It, those are the things which happened in Ethiopia. Yeah. Everything had gone. People were dying, animals were dying, no food, everything. It was chaotic. So, um, using energy saving technologies when you are cooking, especially cooking, is very, very important. And these people came up with this program, which we see in the form of a tree. Okay. Which is really natural. When you talk about a tree and the program is in the form of a tree, it's very, very natural. And the purpose, the mission they had was to stop environment degradation through educate people and using natural resources wisely. Because you can't stop people from using resources, natural yes. resources, yes. but you have to show them that they have to use them wisely. So they came up with this tree program and they thought that the stem of the tree is very, very important part of the tree and they said should be awareness. They had to start our creating awareness to the Ugandanese how do you take care of the natural resources? How do you use them? How do you benefit from them without destroying them completely? So awareness was started by them uh, through newspapers, gatherings, talking to people, communities, schools, churches, for people to know more about the importance of environment. Now they looked at the problems which we are the same problems in Ethiopia or in most of the African countries. Mm. And that is how we cook. So branch number one, the way we cook using our domestic stove at home and the way we cook using institutional stoves in schools and other institutions like prisons, hospitals and other places, we, use, we have been using traditional fireplace that is of three stories, where you have three doors. When you put the saucepan on top, whether it is institutional or domestic, there are three open doors where you put firewood. And when you put firewood in the three, you are using a lot, and the fire, the fire flames are very strong, 
Part of it is cooking, but the rest is cooking the air around the saucepan. So they thought there should be some improvement on both stoves. That's the problem number one and the solution. Mm. Then they looked at number two, where people, you, we call them wood burn, that's what they call them, wood burn industries, where they are making um, bricks, uh, fish smoking, uh, brewing wallage, and those other things where they are done in the bushes, sometimes somewhere away from the home. Mm. And these people also were using, or are still using, a lot of fire, a lot. But Jeep founder members thought this was a, a government policy. The government had to come up with a government policy mm. for the whole country to help these people improve on this so that they also reduce the consumption of wood like here. Then they looked at number three, the charcoal production in the country. Traditionally, charcoal production, you cut a lot of trees and you try to burn, get to get charcoal, but in most cases, a lot of wood, wood is burned to ash. So one comes up with very little. By the time these people were starting this, they contacted the researchers which researchers came up with a report saying that if Mary or Isaac cuts trees to produce charcoal, he or she needs 10 tons of wood piled and start processing, but you will get only one ton. The rest will be burned to ash. Mm. So they said this also had to be improved. Okay. Then they said, when you talk to somebody, for example, if you go to a doctor and you say, I have problems in the stomach, I have this and that, then the doctor will say, I'm prescribing you aspirin. Then immediately say, oh, I can't take that. Whenever I take aspirin, I feel a kind of burning session in the, in the stomach. Mm. That doctor, a trained one, cannot just say, Mary, go. He finds an alternative mm. and say, Mary, you can take Panadol, you'll be fine. That's an alternative. So these people say, after telling the people all these problems, especially here, which you know we, we have to cook, we have to eat till death, you know, then they said, if we say, ah, don't use this, or oh, don't use this, what would be the alternative? Encouraging alternative fuel. That's what these people thought. And they thought about briquettes, which you will see later. So dust could be used for cooking, biogas for cooking, solar for cooking and for light, even biogas for light. Mm. So these were alternatives that those people came up with. Although now, by the time we are 40 years old, we've gone far into more cleaner energy, which you also see when you go around. Mm. We are using electric pressure cooker, which takes very little energy and uh, we are using baskets which also take so little because you, you use the basket after cooking for a very short time and when you put the food in the basket which is well stuffed with the um, insulator the food will get cooked in that case you are reducing on the consumption of mm. fuel which fuel when you are cutting to get fuel you are destroying the environment mm. and the whole nation will lose the benefits of that Finally, these people, by that time, of course, 83, 82, we had a lot of forests in the country. Very natural, thick, large forests, including Babila, which was very, very big and very thick and very natural. Debudongo, Debugoma, and others. Mm -hmm. uh, these people in Uganda, of course, we are seeing a lot of bushes, a lot of trees around. So they did not want to start with the tree planting issue because those people would say, what are you talking about? Mm. We have a lot of trees and all that. But having mentioned this and discussing with the Wanaich in the country, mm. and they started mentioning some of the places we are going to fetch fire very far, especially the girls who find so many problems on the way. And some of us in the semi peri urban places we are even now buying firewood. Mm. So that indicated that tree planting was a necessity. Okay. So that's why they made it last 
that emphasize that tree planting is very, very, very important and has to be paid by, done by everybody mm. is as long as you are living. And here, they wanted to talk more, to see that people get it right. Why should they be told to plant? But in many places, even when I started working with Jeep, we could talk to the people and they say, Jeep, do you think you are the one who planted Madina? Mm. Are you the ones who ordered the Goma to Goma, Dongo, and all those? And we said, no. But as we see here, and here, and here, we are using the Lord. Okay, thank and you. They came up with a formula for planting trees where they had question is uh, like, who should plant trees in Uganda? Mm. Why should one plant trees? When they come to why, they wanted everybody to start thinking yes. what are the uses of the trees. So people come up with many, many uses, mentioning them themselves, and then they start feeling the need for planting mm. trees. Waste management, as said by Ruth Kiwanuka, is one way joint energy and environment project is conserving the environment. Let's practically see how some of what is considered as wastes is being reutilized at Jeep in earning income and promoting environmental conservation. Now we make various types of uh, products from these wastes now here. Now on the second on the second R reusing them into uh, until now, they, they become raw materials. They become raw materials like for making these storage boxes, like this one, which was made out of waste newspaper. Now, these these are these are what you call paper paper tubes. So we use use this uh, what is called a uh, paper some or paper skewer. But let me let me leave it. Now if it is used for rolling, you put your cup of newspaper here on the table, then you roll it. You get some, some uh, kind of this, it's like a stick, but you call it a paper tube or straw. Mm. Then this? Now then this, uh, this is a lampshade. Lampshade, for example, I can, sorry, I can open it from here. Then I, I decide to put my, uh, repla replace a bulb. Uh, then, now I, this, this shade here. It was made of, um, first of all, you blow a balloon to get the shape you want. Then you get that, uh, you get this yarn, that thread, some like cotton thread, that yarn. Then you dress, you dress that balloon eh, with that yarn after soaking it in wood glue. You normally use wood glue because it's, uh, it has that, it's that, that it's, it sticks very well, substances very well. That way it's, uh, that, so we dress that balloon with that that cotton, which is soaked in glue, uh, like very many times until you get something like this. Uh, so it for it to to dry for, you give it 24 hours to dry to get the shape you want. Normally, it doesn't come out very. If it if you, if the shape doesn't come out very well, you, you can do another balloon to to what to stretch the threads into the shape you want. Mm. So now this this base was made out of newspapers. Some of, some some may think that is it's card cardboard the box it's box kind, but these are newspapers. Mm. Mm. Then this uh some of us uh, we go to weddings and they ask us why 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 do we need why do we need uh why do why do we ask for this what why do we need uh, these bottle tops for what? Some of you may ask, be, be thinking, be asking that question. So these bottle tops are useful. Those bottle tops you get from those glass soda bottles. Eh? Mm. So now, first of all that, you get one, a bottle top. This, uh, those which are called, they call, what they call? Yes. Whatever you call them. Yes. Eh? You get a, a bottle top, and you get a piece of cloth, eh? no matter those bit inch. Mm. Uh -huh. And you dress it, you dress it, uh, you, you use this, this, you know these threads which are used for sewing, use, which are used for mending shoes, eh? Yes. You get those threads uh, which are strong enough, these ones. Then, we kind of, uh, yeah, we dress it very well. We first sew the cloth into a circular form, mm. which you, which we, where the, where the bottle top will sit. And now after, 
you you pull it mm. so that it can enclose the the bottle top, top. inside mm. and to join joining them joining them like you can sew the edge of this the edge of this bottle top the edge of the other bottle top mm. until you get a chain okay. yes so now yeah is is for also storage mm. it's entirely made of newspaper newspaper wastes yes newspaper wastes uh, you just keep on like how we roll a belt mm. just keep on rolling them until you just keep on uh, and you add on you, you add on until you get uh, like something like this okay. and you paint it mm. Mm. Yes. now this chair this chair some of us may be some of us may be having our boxes at home. There are very many, but we don't know what, we don't know what to use them for. Some of us just decide to burn them. Yet, you can come up with a very useful thing like this: uh, a chair. Mm -hmm. Now, this chair has many things, many uh, many things inside. First of all, down inside here, the the bottles of the same kind. They are packed inside. They are packed inside plastic mm -hmm. bottles of the same kind. Uh, for example, if I, if I want to use uh, Renzori bottles, you have to be Renzori only. Mm. And the one the way I'm packing the the bottles is is the what? Those bottles I want to give me the shape of the chair, chair which a yeah. uh, chair I want. Yes. Okay. So first, uh, then after after packing the bottles very well, mm. you pack layer by a bottle layer. You pack the the layers of bottle layer by layer. You first tie them with a thread, and you pack another layer. Of bottles tie them with a thread like that according to the uganda national household survey 2019-2020 released by uganda bureau of statistics Ubos week 73 percent of ugandans were proved to be using firewood to cook up from 64 percent who are using firewood in a similar survey done in 2016-2017 Promotion of energy saving technologies is another solution Jeep is using to prevent environmental degradation. Now at Jeep we promote uh, energy saving stoves, ICS, and we have uh, two tiers, that is tier 1 and tier 2. Um, tier 1 clean cooking energies is what you can see in my background and tier 2 we shall progress and go to tier 2. For tier 2 that's where we talk about solar for cooking, uh, electric pressure cookers and uh, modern ovens as well. Um, to start with uh, tier 1 we have the simplest uh, form of uh, energy saving stove which we train in uh, rural communities and this is called the rocket rowena stove. Now in this stove uh, the efficiency of this stove is around 35%. That means uh, the uh, uh, energy efficiency is 35%, which means if you're using 10 sticks of firewood to boil one liter of uh, water, in this one you will use four to five sticks of firewood to boil the same when you're using the open, open stove. So this is a, a two pot hole stove whereby you use the same wood to cook two things at the same time. So you can prepare food here and sauce at the same time. Then it has a chimney. Uh, this one is not complete, but it has a chimney. You can uh, connect two and the smoke goes out, which helps in uh, reducing of uh, lung or the breathing uh, affected uh, diseases. So this is the rocket rollena. Then we have the shielded stove, which is here as well. Uh, this is one pothole. And uh, these are made from locally available materials. Uh, that is, uh, we use uh, anthill soil uh, blended with uh, grass, cut grass, or dry grass, or banana leaves. So these are locally available, and people in the rural communities, even in the urban or urban centers, can access them and make these stoves. Then we also have this stilty under tier one. We have these, these ones are the normal charcoal saving energy saving stoves they use less charcoal because of the insulation of uh, clay we also have this type it is the same but this one is dual purpose it uses firewood and charcoal at the same time so if you want to use firewood you just remove this and you can use firewood and if you want to use the charcoal you just put this inside and you use the charcoal 
Then we have these improved tier one clean cooking technologies. We have the tillard, which is top top lead down down thrust. Eh? So what this does is that it is two in one. So you cut your wood to this length and you pack it inside here. Then you light it. It will burn from top to down, hence the name tillard, top down. So it will burn from up to down. And as it is burning, it, uh, it, it, it forms charcoal. Now when the wood is, is, uh, is complete and the burning has stopped, you just open here, remove this part, and you can still use the charcoal down here. So this is improved tier two technologies. So this one is more to barber stove. It uses wood, but very little wood to to burn or boil something that is big. So that is uh, this is tier two, but this is improved tier one. So we also have the barbecue stove. Um, this is a stove used to prepare our roast meat. Uh, the advantage it has is that one, the meat can't get burnt because of the, the it it, uh, it conserves energy and you don't use a lot of fire or you don't use a lot of charcoal. It uses briquettes and charcoal as well and it is very efficient. You don't need to monitor the, 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 the meat that is being roasted. All you need to do is put it here, close, and you come back after some time to check on it, but it doesn't get burnt. So we also have the pizza ovens. This is specifically for making pizza. Uh, people like it because of uh, the, the pizza has more flavor, that's what they say, as compared to the rest. So this is a pizza oven, it's also energy saving. What we have here is an improved institutional cook stove. Uh, it's, we have, we have uh, tested this with the uh, creek and it also has 35%. It's between 35 to 40% uh, thermal efficiency. But uh, the advantage with this one, it has, it has an electronics blower. What this blower does is that, one, it increases the efficiency. The blower? the blower is this one here. This is the blower. It is just a fan attached to it in that it uh, provides air or supplies air. So if you want to increase or reduce the heat, um, there, is a, there is a circuit here where you, which you can turn. Now here we are increasing the heat. So I'm increasing the air, the rate at which the air is blown in. Or I can reduce to reduce the heat. It's easy to light because you don't need to blow. You just put on the switch and uh, start the fire. Plus it's also highly efficient and you can control the temperature of the stove. Yes. Um, this is a normal improved institutional cook stove. For it, it doesn't have a blower, but it also its efficiency is around 35%, thermal efficiency. Yes. So this is uh, the normal institutional cook stove. So now, in between tier one and tier two, we have other technologies that help in cooking and keeping things warm. This is what we call the fireless cooking basket. Now, what the fireless cooking basket does is that it works on the principle of heat retention. So the theory is if you heat food to the boiling point, you do not need to supply it with more heat to cook it. So what we do is if the, the theory still is if you can maintain this heat, this food at that temperature, it will get ready. So this is what the heat retention bag does. Uh, for example, if you're cooking beans, you will boil your beans for, if they are fresh beans, you boil them for 40 minutes. Mm. After the 40 minutes, you put them inside here for like 30 to 45 minutes and you'll find them ready. Um, they, they, they cook food, these are uh, fireless cooking baskets, they cook food and they can also keep food warm. What do you make them out of? Um, these ones are made out of uh, cloth, as you can see. This is normal cloth and uh, cotton waste. So this is a normal basket. Uh, we also have a lining of cotton waste inside uh, with the cloth to keep the cotton waste intact. Yes. So these are fireless cooking baskets. Um, the bigger the, the, the basket, the more it can contain inside. But uh, the theory is the same. Yes, of course, they have had impact in the, in the communities. One, because um, from the communities of Nakaseke, Nakasongola, Nebi, Zombo, and Ajumani, where we have uh, promoted these technologies, there has been a, a report on the increase in savings 
both money and uh, firewood. Because uh, uh, if we even did some tests, we, we made some rudimentary tests on uh, how these technologies fare in the, in the real world. And we found out that uh, if instead of, uh, if you're using the open fire cook stove and you're using this, the person using this is going to use very little firewood as compared to the person using the open fire. We have had uh, testimonies of people saving up to 10,000 a week on just wood saving, yes. And then this one keeps, uh, this one has also helped families to become stable. Because now when men come back in the evening, they find the food warm and they are not using any firewood or they are not spending much in keeping the food warm as well. Um, the, the, the test uh, is between eight to, between seven to eight hours keeping the food warm, yes. Because when we go in the fields and we carry out the tests, we usually start in the morning and by evening we are leaving, but the food is still warm. But the guarantee is between seven to eight hours of keeping the food warm. But it can also cook as well, like I explained. If you're boiling rice, you just boil your rice for five minutes, put it inside here for 35 minutes, and you'll find the rice ready. ready. Yes. We shall carry out a test and you will... Uh, we shall carry out a time test and that will be proven. We have the electric pressure cookers. Um, these are the two types. The difference is volume and wattage. This one uses 1,000 watts and it is the capacity of 7 liters. So we did uh, like the rudimentary tests I talked about. This was the cheapest form of cooking technologies. Um, we were boiling a kilo of beans using all the technologies we promote and the open fire. And we found out that this one, you can boil beans at 500 shillings. Between 500 and 700 shillings, you can prepare your beans, which is, the, 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 that is, because when you go to the communities, beans are is the, like the staple food and it's what takes a lot of wood because it takes a long time to cook, especially the dry beans. And uh, actually in the refugee settlements, they have faced that problem because uh, they, they are given beans, but they are not given the wood. So such technologies are very good to promote because they spend very little. Someone can look at the 1,000 watts and uh, get worried, but if you make the calculations on the cost or the amount of watt hours used while using this technology, it will amount to 700 shillings maximum if you're preparing beans. Uh, this is also an electric pressure cooker, but it, for it, it uses 400 watts. And uh, we use this to, we are connecting this to the new technology. Uh, this is a solar generator. Um, I'm going to explain more about the solar generator and why it came about and why we have come up with it. Uh, in our solar installations, we found that the cost is increased or it is a bit high. And uh, that is due to the batteries. The batteries at the moment, are, the good batteries are very expensive and they are very delicate, they get spoiled very quickly. So that has increased the price of installation or acquisition of the solar system. So what we are doing is that we are doing away with the battery with this technology, whereby you can cook directly from the solar panels and you don't need a battery. So this is a solar generator, and what is inside there is what we call a back and boost converter. So what it does is that it converts the direct, the, direct, uh, the DC from, uh, it converts DC to AC, and it maintains it at 200, 230, 220 volts. So you can use this, uh, this pressure cooker. At the moment, it can give us 600 watts. So we can use something of 400 watts with it. It can not only cook, but you can use any appliance that is below 400 watts, eh, which can work directly from solar. And regardless of the fluctuations of the, of the sun, it will still give you the 600 watts. Despite the efforts by non-governmental organizations in promoting environmental conservation, stakeholders say changing people's mindset remains a hindrance.